Hello, my name is M. Jason Graham, and this is Writing. This is Writing is brought to you by MJGStoryCreation.com. Go to MJGStoryCreation.com and get tips and advice on how to turn your idea into an epic story today. So, as we continue our discussion of story units, uh, we move into adventure. And I begin to realize that if I go through this story unit right now, you'll be looking at a very long program, and I don't really want to do that to you. So what we're going to do is discuss the idea of adventure in general, and then next week I will do four episodes of This Is Writing and break down uh, adventure so that you can see each part of it and how they how they interact and how they build and the other key thing is that the adventure structure is relevant not only to the adventure structure but also to the campaign and epic structure which are the long form storytellings uh, particularly with adventure this is where you get into the narrative structure for novels, for movies. If you have a short series, this is the format that you would use in order to block out that story from this standpoint. So let's get into it. First, of course, as always, um, adventure. What is it? So... An adventure is two or more rivalries developed to make a significant change in the life of the protagonist. So, again, like I said, we're building on the previous story unit, which is rivalry. So this is a greater thing. And, and so those are the, the ideas is that the idea is that whatever the ambition the protagonist is pursuing will make a significant change in their life. So if you want to think about it like, like a bank heist, if a character decides that they need to get, and generally they're pursuing some kind of resource, it's generally that's, that's what's happening. So um, because it's difficult to know the total opposition to the protagonist, um, there's dangerous risk involved. So it's something that is not only, you know, some risk, it has to be significant. It, uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Uh, you have to risk something in order to get something. So in the case of a bank heist, obviously somebody is risking uh, jail time or even getting killed. You could get shot by a guard. So at this point, it's about that. Adventures generally generate multiple powerful antagonists because the gathering of resources upsets the balance of those persons who are already in power. So all of these things need to be taken into consideration when you're writing an adventure. And of course, uh, adventures also evoke significant emotional trans uh, transformation in the characters that embark on them. Their reflection is tested and all three of them. So uh, physicality, resources, and um, psyche, all of those things are tested during an, an adventure. And the character discovers who they truly are. So this idea of who they believe they are, it's tested and they get to see who they actually are. Do they live up to those ideas? Where, where do they fail? Where can they improve? Uh, it also brings in, and you'll see, we talk about more about um, foils. And so in an adventure, foils become also more significant in that we get to explore them, and they are also tested as well. So emotional beats, emotional transitions. 16. And this is where we get into the four act structure. And I know that we, we have talked about this. I've talked about this in uh, dividing it into four. 
it just makes it a lot easier. And it's, it's my belief, particularly with this kind of structure, that this is what we're missing um, in, in most of our storytelling. This is what we're missing in film and television. There is no reason for a movie to be longer than 90 minutes. I, I mean, absolutely no reason for a movie to be longer than 90 minutes. And most movies uh, properly done story-wise could be told in no more than an hour and 15 minutes. Honestly, 75 minutes is enough for one film. The reason why, in my opinion, that they go into two hours, two and a half hours for a movie is that they don't believe in the story. They don't believe in the ability of the story to capture the imagination of the people. And so they add a bunch of artifice, which we've talked about before. And then also it's like, well, there's a lot of backstory. Okay, well, if there's a lot of backstory, then maybe you should start the story at the backstory. But this is why this process is so important is because until you do this, until you go through what the story is from, from top to bottom, you don't know where to begin to tell the story. That's the reason for the story units, right? We need some idea of the length of the story, but also where to tell it. Where's the most, com the most compelling place to tell this story? And you don't know any of that until after you've developed the story, honestly. You think, and it's happened to me many times, and I've talked to, to many writers as well, you think that the story starts at this place because that's the most, of, the most intriguing part that kind of gave you the story seed to write the story. So you start writing from there. But then when you really begin to flesh out the idea of what you're pursuing and what you're saying to your audience and what characters represent to that, and then the action of the story based upon those ideas, then you begin to find out, hey, maybe this isn't where the story is supposed to start or stop. Maybe there's some stuff to be told before it, or maybe I can start later in the story. Be that as it may, a four-act structure is necessary, and we're actually going to go over a four-act structure. But there are plenty of plenty of films, not so much in novels. Novels that are done in a series are generally done in three or four books, which I have a great deal of respect for. So they're, they're either done in two books or they're done in four books. Uh, but you see very few novels that are done, if, if they're an epic storytelling, they're done in three books. And even if they are done in three books, generally there's an epic of four act structure to the three books, which is actually what we find in the movies as well. We'll get into that next week. But suffice it to say that generally these films in particular are two hours, two and a half hours, and it's because they don't understand the story or they don't have faith in the story. And so they lean on artifice and actors in order to carry the story, and it's a long time to sit in a theater. I think that it's better to do two hour and 15 minute movies than it is to do a two hour movie. That's, that's, my, that's my personal opinion about it. Um, talking about, I'm talking about all of them, and I'm talking about movies that I absolutely loved, like Black Panther talking about I'm talking about Wonder Woman like with those movies how fantastic would it have been to spend an entire movie for instance with Black Panther and T'Chaka and seeing the events and getting to know seeing the attack like taking a movie to go back in time and see that attack happen and then see him come to the realization that it's his brother that is responsible for that attack and the capturing of Claw. Like, to tell that story before we then tell the story of T'Challa and having to deal with this situation that his father created. 
it's the same thing with me for Wonder Woman. How would it have been to have an opportunity to explore Themyscira and see the internal workings and why it was such a problem for her to leave, not just because she is the weapon, but because she's in, because there's very few Amazons, what an integral part of her of their society that she is. And so that we can see that the decision to leave the mascara in order to go do this would weigh more heavily on her. Because to me, and it's one of the things with the movie, I kind of saw her as the, the pampered princess that became the trained warrior. But the only... The only real relevance to me as an audience member was that she was the weapon. I understand and get that everybody loved her on the island, but you force the actors to create 20 years of emotion, 25 years of emotion, and put that into one scene or into two or three scenes. Instead of taking the time as the writer, as the producer, as, as a production company, to tell that story so that the audience goes on that journey with you. And so when we when we close the first movie in Wonder Woman, maybe we close it with Diana standing, uh, looking at the shoreline, trying to decide if she really wants to be a part of this society, for instance. And then we see Steve Trevor's boat crash in the harbor, and you end the movie there. That's how you create the anticipation. That way, when the second movie opens, we get past all of this stuff because we understand um, Greek society. We understand that what it is on uh, Themyscira, which is not quite Greek society, but we understand that version of Greek society. So we get Steve Trevor's character in the second movie who becomes our everyman to a certain extent in answering our, our questions about this society, like our viewpoint of it. And so the decision to go to man's world, now we do that with an understanding of who Diana is at her core and what changes she has to make. That's the journey of the character. I'm taking too, too much time. But this, this is my argument. Wonder Woman could have been two fantastic movies Black Panther could have been two fantastic movies um, without even interrupting the, the uh, Infinity War arc, really. Black Panther 2 should, could have starred T'Challa with Black Panther 1, and we, we, get, we, would get, we would get the bridge. We could still do Killmonger. We could still do Hell. That whole plot line if you do an entire movie that's about T'Chaka and um Njobu you you get that it resonates even more with T'Challa and um uh Eric um and Jedica. so four act structure next week we will do four episodes of This Is Writing. <clears throat> I'll feature all four episodes on uh, my um, MJG Story Creation IG TV page as well. And I will also try to still do the, uh, the in under five minutes. But the key is to keep these videos at roughly 10 minutes. That's why I'm doing this. So my name is M. Jason Graham. And this is writing. This is writing has been brought to you by MJGStoryCreation.com. Go to MJGStoryCreation.com and get a free hour consultation. Turn your idea into an epic story today. I'll see you next time.